Hello my friends! On this video I will explain how to use the AppShell components from the template into your own Ionic application. In case you don't know what the AppShell is, here is a short definition. The AppShell is the minimal HTML, CSS and JavaScript required to power the user interface. It improves the user experience by quickly launching a static rendered page while the browser downloads the full client version and switches to it automatically after the content is available. We wrote a super detailed post about this explaining all the benefits of using the app shell. I will leave the link on the comments below. So, when you buy the template you will get all the source code of the Ionic app. I like to think of the template as a toolbox that you can use whenever you need. So in this video, I will show you how to extract the shell components from the template and add them into your own Ionic project. At this step, I will assume that you already downloaded the files from your Ionic Themes account, you unzipped it, you run npm install and you are able to see the project running on your, on your browser. If you have any problems getting to this point, please refer to the documentation or send us an email. For this video, I created a new Ionic Angular project using the tabs starter. You can do this by running the, the Ionic start command from your terminal. So the first step would be uh, on our new Ionic project, I will copy the shell folder from our template. This folder has three components, the image, image gel, the text shell, an aspect ratio, and also a data store class. This data store has a subject named timeline which holds a reference to the state emitted by the data source. It has a mechanism to append a shell or empty model with skeleton components before the data source emits the real data. The data source is a simple observable to get your real data. For this example, we will get the, the, the data from a remote API. Because our template has server-side server rendering support, if you don't plan to use it, you need to delete a few lines from the image shell component TS. Yes. If you do plan to use server-side rendering, you need to also add all the transfer state-related files and libraries. Please check the documentation to learn how to use the project with server-side rendering. So, from, from the image shell component TS yes, file, just delete these lines I will show you. Now, uh, we should go to our environment TS yes, files and at the following configuration. You can copy this from the template environment file. You can set the debug flag to true if you want to debug the shell components. And also you can change the network delay time. It's in milliseconds. We wait on purpose one or two secs on the local environment when fetching from JSON or from a remote API to simulate the backend round trip. However, in production, you should set this delay to zero. So that's all we need to copy from the template project into our own new project. So now let's see how to fetch real that data and how to add these shell components to our, our application. For this video and for this tutorial, we built this app. It's a simple app with tabs, um, three different 
examples of how to use the shell components. It has a list with users, photos and cards, all of them using the shell components, image shell and text shell. So now let's start with the list tab. As you can see, we have a list of users with some basic information. This data is pulled from a remote API. So we will build, we will create a new service with our, with our functions to get the, the data. Our first function will be to get the data source. As I mentioned before, our user's information will, will come from the API. And the other function is to get the data store. As I mentioned earlier, the data store has a subject which holds a reference to a state emitted by the data source. And also, it has a mechanism to append a shell before the data source emits the real data. Now we will create a basic data model class for our user list. The list model has a list of users of user items which have name, email and profile picture. Note that the user list model extends the shell model which adds a, an is shell flag. The models are necessary so we are able to show the same HTML structure both for the shell and for the real content. Now I want to show you the, the HTML I used for this list, list view. So I used the image shell component and also the text shell component, but all the options available for this shell component are explained and showcased in the, in the template showcase section. So I won't get into detail here. But if you have any questions, please uh, write a comment on this video. So now I want to go over the, the resolvers. You may be familiar with the Angular root resolvers. They help us resolve data during navigation. So we will create a root resolver that returns the data store for the user list. Now from the page, we will subscribe to the activated root data observable. This will emit two values. The first one will be the shell model and the second one will be the real data once it is available. Let's see it on the code. So as you can see, we have covered all the aspects of, of how to add the shell components into our app. I only explained the tab one page, that is the user list, but tab two and three are similar. So feel free to see the code to download, download this repo from GitHub and see the code. And let me know if you have any questions. I'm happy to help. Thanks.